So now you should be ready to use the tool and process the data. You've loaded up the, the tool in the Arc tool box. You've gone to your Customize Extensions and made sure that you have 3D Analyst and it's turned on. You've got your LAS version 1.4 files in one directory. And you've got the DEM, various DEM tiles in another directory, with all with the same prefix. So you now can click on Step 1 and we'll begin the building object extraction. And the first part is pretty straightforward. You point it to where the last input directories are. You show where that is. You go to the DM, show where all the DMs are. And then you point it to a place where you have an out point, output to a directory. Um, well, it will do when it does the processing. It will actually create a number of files. We've tried to streamline it so that it doesn't output as many as it actually goes through there. But it will put all the, the data products into the output directory and actually into a timestamp uh, folder. With the theory being that uh, you can run multiple runs here and it will put it in separate timestamp uh, folders. So the first part is fairly straightforward. Next thing we'll go to here is the last data set to raster parameters here. What this does is tell the tool how you want to develop the image data that's going to be developed from the last data. So what happens is with this process, it'll take a look at your last files, it'll ingest it into what Esri calls a last data set file folder or a LASD data set. And it takes those and then sorts out from all the last files everything that is unclassified and all the last returns. Again, and what we're looking for are the building objects. So we're looking for everything that has either a one return or is at the bottom of a, like a tree response there. And so what we've said is uh, get, show us everywhere where everything is a single return and show us everywhere where the, the, the bottom return comes back and comes back and develops an image on the elevations based on that last return data set. Now when it goes through this, it, you have multiple different ways of developing these digital surface models, these images. You can create all sorts of different images actually. These are all based on ARC tools. And so we've tried as much as possible to preserve all the utility of that, even though most of this is not going to be required for this uh, processing the buildings. But you can do your own experimentation and play with these, some of these other variables. But our defaults here is to take a look at the last data set and use only the elevation information. Again, you can use other, you can create an intensity image you want. That's not useful for this purposes, but you could ultimately use this to create an intensity image. Um, then we create the digital surface model. We tell it uh, that if it finds a point to pull back a elevation data, the elevation data from that to create the digital surface model. If it doesn't find a point in this, this certain area, then we respond with no, no data. So we just are interested in areas where there's potentially a building and everything else we want to turn off. So we, have the, we tell it to just look at uh, the, the places within a certain square area that it has actual response. If it has no response, just give us none. Now you have all sorts of other variabilities that you can, or parameters that you can use here to model through there. But uh, for this purpose, we're just selecting this one here. The DSM, the digital surface model, we're saying should be a floating point. Again, this preserves um, uh, the meters and the or um, fractional feet or fractional meters in information. You turn this into integer, which you have the possibility to. You only get straight meters or straight feet, depending on what the elevation data is in. And that could truncate a lot of your information. So even though it makes the data set that much larger, we preserve the, the floating points that we can have access to, you know, like one meter or 30 centimeters, and that such data there. Uh, to create the digital surface model, we say that we want cells out there, and there's another different option, but we're, we're look at everything within a certain cell. And the cell is defined by the what's considered the ground sampling resolution here. In this case, uh, a standard product for quality level 2 LiDAR data is uh, one meter spatial resolution. So we've gone ahead and put in one as the default. 
Uh, if you have other data sets, you can change that. And again, this is based on the spatial, res spatial resolution and the spatial units here. So if you have feet data and you have like quality level two uh, state plane feet data, then you probably want to change this to two or three. So you're modeling like a two square foot or three square foot. Again, we're in this case, generally we've seen a lot of uh, UTM meter type of uh, projection information, and so we default to a one meter spatial resolution. So this will output put, uh, digital surface models with grids of one square meter. So with all this information, it will take the, the last point cloud, process it into a data set, and then turn it into a digital surface model representing all the uh, single return or last return data and put that into a digital surface model. At that point in time, the digital surface model is just an elevation file. But what we then do is we take the elevation file and subtract it from the actual bare earth DDM tiles. And from that, we get a height DSM. So basically, how far above ground are each of these objects that we, we are mapping here. So we end up uh, then with a DSM that's just, just purely a height DSM, again, in elevation units, whatever your elevation, the original elevation units are. In this case, it's meters for this data set, but in other ones, it could be feet or whatever other things. Now, that means that we still end up with a lot of noise, uh, like especially shrubs and things, uh, anything that's above ground, not uh, pure uh, bare ground. So what we do is tr we try to thresh out out the, the data by turning off everything that's below a certain height, realizing that buildings tend to have a, a certain minimum rooftop height. And uh, so we put that in here. And what this does in this case, again, this is a data set, well, most data sets we've dealt with tend to be in UTM meters. The elevations are in meters too. We say that everything that's two meters or above, we will keep, but everything below two meters, we will turn off, make it no data. Now, again, if your data set is in feet, you'll have to change that appropriately. And if you have other different criteria where you're, you're building heights, you want to either make them either smaller or taller, you can, you can change it here. The last thing in the building ex object extractor tool set here is the image segmentation. So we've developed this height DSM, and we've uh, thresholded everything out that was uh, below a certain height. So now we're left with just objects that are a certain height or above. Again, we will still have a lot of uh, trees and other kinds of objects, as well as the buildings. So what we do is we put the data set through what we call image segmentation. It's a little bit more complex to explain, but what it does is it tries to find within the raster object places where the context is dissimilar, and then it makes a break and says, okay, we have two separate different raster objects. It's kind of a classification. It turns basically the raster data to a bunch of raster-based polygons, where everything that's similar in one respect, it gets one kind of class, and another class for the next one, another class for the next one. So with this, we're hoping that we take away, take apart uh, flat roofs from maybe adjoining trees and other kinds of objects. We're figuring that the, the trees have different uh, kinds of object information as well as the, the, the flat roofs. So we're basically creating classification of these objects here. And uh, the image segmentation process requires certain different uh, uh, parameters to be filled out. One is spectral detail, and similarly we have the spatial detail. Uh, again, very kind of difficult to, to kind of explain. These are more hand wavy type concepts. But the idea here is that if there's a lot of contextual change, uh, the spatial detail will will pull that out. If there's not a whole lot, uh, then it won't pull it out. Uh, spectral detail means that uh, there's a big change in the, the, the values. Um, again, you can have multi-band image to put in here. But in this case, we just have one band, which is the elevation data. And so we're just looking at kind of, um, kind of certain abrupt changes in elevation. We've set up uh, the default for spectral detail being 15.5, and spatial detail would be 15. These are values from 1 to 20. 
again, if you're not satisfied with some of the outputs you're having here, this may be a place where you may want to change. If you're finding that you have way too much uh, detail, way too many objects being classified out, then you want to lower the spatial detail or the spectral detail. Maybe make them 10 or 5 or something. If you're finding that you're not getting enough of the data being pulled out, not, not enough detail, then you want to increase that. Again, maximum you can go to is 20 for each of these. So that's what these two are. Again, it's kind of, uh, you have to kind of play that um, um, as it goes there. But we have found it pretty successful, that we were pretty successful with the, uh, these numbers here. The last thing that gets input into the image segmentation process is the minimum segment size. Here you see value 10. And what that says is that it tries to exclude everything that's kind of small clutter out of the area there. So it says anything below 10 cells, again, in this case, the cells are, we set up for one square meter down here. So we're saying that anything that's a, a clusters as to 10 square meters or larger, we will keep. But anything that's smaller than 10 square meters, we'll toss out. So you'll take this and kind of sort through the data and hopefully classify out all the objects to provide uh, a, a raster-based classification where uh, the rooftops should be separated as separate classes from all of the trees. And that ends uh, this thing. You just Once all that information is filled out, you can hit OK, and you're done with that process.